everyone. Hi. Having so much fun, I almost forgot that I'm a speaker today. Pray for me. I'll take you to my growing up. I had the privilege of meeting a number of my aunties, uncles, and older cousins while growing up. Why is this a big deal? Because my dad is the 18th child, one and eight, and he's not the last. So this means I have a lot of uncles, aunties, cousins, the list goes on. One of the things that captivated me about them, especially those who visited at our house, was seeing them dress up in the morning, looking so beautiful. When I would ask them where they were headed, they would say to me, I am going to work. My young mind soon started to dream about the day when I would also dress up and go to work. I imagined that by that time, I would have enough money to buy everything I want, like my aunties did, or so I thought. In the summer of 2010, there was a hiring opportunity opened up for an intern role in the corporate organization. At this time, I had just completed my first year in my undergraduate study. Of course, I took the opportunity. Finally, a chance to dress up and go to work. That is a picture of me taken on June 8, 2010, dressed up, or so I thought, and heading to work. A few weeks into my internship, I found myself in a situation where I was feeling very distressed and frustrated. I was given a task to conclude, and I was having challenges meeting with the timeline I was given. I was so worried and exasperated. I didn't know when I blotted out, why do I even have to walk? Why do I have to walk? Perhaps this is a question that, like me, you have asked yourself or thought about on some days. Those days that leave you wondering, why your father is not, insert the name of your favorite billionaire. Why do I need to work? It's interesting that we ask that question. What dressed in clothes? The products of someone's work. Or while engaged in an online banter with our mobile phone, another product of people's work. Look around you. You are surrounded by, and in this moment, enjoying the product of people's work. How is it that we question our need to work while enjoying the outcomes of people's work? The chair you are sitting in is someone's attempt to make your life more comfortable. The medical care you can access when you need to is available because there are people working in that field. Again, and ask. Why do we question our need to work while enjoying the outcomes of other people's work? How do we keep the cycle going if we are all consumers and not producers? Clearly, work is one of the major ways that we add value to this world, to ourselves. And this is one of the major reasons why we work. Today, I'll be sharing with you three secrets to accelerated career growth. The first, embrace a positive mindset about work. Embrace a positive mindset about work. I like to say that your mindset is how your mind is set on a matter. It's the compendium of your beliefs influenced by factors including your environment and experiences. In a world, an environment where so many trends, hashtags, content online make work look so undesirable, I hope that the little I have been able to share with you today, which is the crux of the work I do, 
is help you see the need for you and I to work. I hope that the little I've shared so far helps you see work in a more positive light. You see, having a positive mindset about work doesn't completely rule out the possibility of days that will leave you wondering, why do I have to work? But on those days, a positive mindset will help you address the situations that are coming at you better and bounce back quicker. Now, very recently, I went on my first ever career break. And I was looking to use the opportunity to do some upskilling and re-strategizing. I had been looking forward to this break because I also wanted to take the opportunity to take care of my newborn baby. Now, a few weeks into my career break, I started to feel some frustration. The break was not going as planned at all. I had clearly underestimated the demands of caring for a newborn baby. Remember, I had a grand plan for upskilling. How will I upskill? When I was sleep deprived, exhausted from the routines of baby care, and unable to execute on all the to-dos I had lined up for strategy and learning. When I thought about the kind of activities that were taking my time, I mean, diaper change, feeding, I felt even worse. How do I explain to the world that I spent my entire break working for a little human? At this point, after much reflection, because I had to reflect on things, I soon realized that it wasn't the daily activities that were getting to me, but the way I was perceiving them. I did not see the value for my time in taking care of a newborn baby. I was attending to my baby and thinking in my head, I should be doing X, Y, Z right now. Because I focused only on the day-to-day -day activities and not on the reason or purpose for those activities, which was taking care of my baby, a child I had prayed for, and seen to his well-being. Now, being in that state opened up the door to the feeling of unfulfillment, and that emotional experience put me in an unproductive state. That experience taught me many lessons, one of which brings me to my second secret for accelerated career growth. Harness the power of purposeful work. In the words of Victor E. Franklin, the author of Man's Search for Meaning, he says, life is never unbearable because of circumstances, but because of the lack of meaning and purpose. When you don't see purpose in your work, you cannot feel fulfillment from that work. And feeling unfulfilled for a sustained period will set you up for unproductivity. Purposeful work is work that is backed by a compelling why. A why that you are aware of and that is meaningful to you. Work becomes purposeful when we go beyond the day-to-day -day activities and become grounded in the awareness of the value that our work adds to others and to us. You are not just an accountant, for example. You are a curator of financial data used by management teams to make informed decisions that preserve the going concern of the business. You are not just a digital marketer. You are a connector of producers to the consumers that need their products and services. Engaging in purposeful work will set you on cause for stewardship, a practice of going the extra mile to ensure that beyond executing on your job role, you see to the accomplishment of the goal of your team. 
Stewardship is the reason why Van Dyke will go passionately after an opportunity to score a goal, even when scoring goals is not his primary responsibility. He is aware that beyond executing his role as a defender, what is most important is that his team is able to get more goals into the opponent's net. How do I see purpose in my mundane, dry, boring work, you may ask? These three questions may help you. First, what's in it for others? How does your work make the life of other people better? And by other people, I mean those who benefit from your work, both directly and indirectly. Second, what's in it for your organization? How does your role uh, contribute to the accomplishment of the corporate goals and the big visions of your organization? Third, what's in it for you? How does your work add value to you every day and prepare you to be the person you desire to be tomorrow? I leave you to ponder on these questions at a later time. Like my friend Jay said, isolate if you must. Like Samora shared with us, re-engineer yourself, redesign yourself if you need to. But by all means, ditch meaningless work for purposeful work. Lately, we have observed a change in weather conditions which is signaling a change in seasons. And that got me thinking a few days ago about how our career seasons also change. I generally speak about four career seasons. The apprentice, the experienced, the master, and the authority. These seasons may occur in the progressive cycle or may happen in multiple cycles in your career. But what is important to note is that there are peculiar attributes to each season. The apprentice is usually the earliest part of your career where you have just completed your schooling or training and are looking to harness opportunities around you. In that season, you are usually the green horn in the room. Shake your neighbor if you think that that season speaks to yours right now. Don't shake them too hard. The experience has gathered sustained work experience and is gaining a grasp of things and on their way to mastering the skills required in their field of work. The master season is characterized by expertise, specialization, and personal branding. And the authority is the industry leader whose contributions are the highest reference points for professions, nations, and organizations. Why is it important for me to know my career season, you ask? This brings me to the third secret for accelerated career growth. You should know your career season so that you can align your choices to suit your career season. Think about how a change of weather impacts on your choices. Your choice of what to wear, where to go, how to socialize. So it is with your career. In the apprentice season, for example, you must choose jobs that give you ample opportunities to learn even when that means volunteering or earning lesser initially. In the experience season, you must put a lot of effort into gaining mastery, being visible, and professional networking. In the master season, you must prioritize personal branding and thought leadership. And in the authority season, you must amplify legacy building. 
Making the right choices in each season will help you thrive, progress to the next season quickly, which will mean an accelerated growth in your career. Imagine buying a beautifully packaged product only to be disappointed by its content. This is what happens when you skip the foundational learning process and focus on personal branding as an apprentice. Today, <laughs> I challenge you to reflect on the season you are and ask yourself, am I giving to this season what it requires? I also challenge you to shift your focus from why do I need to work to how can my work be more purposeful, impactful, and rewarding. Thank you very much. Thank you.